Hi, and welcome to lesson two in our nucleus unit. Here we're going to talk about average atomic mass and why, when we look at the periodic table, a good number of the atomic masses written on them are written as decimals, even though we learned in our last unit that the mass of an individual atom is just a function of the sum of its protons and its neutrons. I put up three different versions of hydrogen on this slide. These are the three most common isotopes of hydrogen. If you remember back to last unit, an isotope is just an atom of a particular element with a different number of neutrons than another isotope of the same element. In these three isotopes of hydrogen, we see that they have zero, one, and two neutrons as we go from left to right on the slide. Let's see how this factors into determining an element's average atomic mass. So most elements are going to have more than one isotope. And the average atomic mass is just an average of all of the isotopes of the element that's weighted by their abundance. This is actually shown on the periodic table wherever it applies. So here's our go-to example of carbon, and you can see that its atomic mass is being reported as 12.011 atomic mass units. That's because there is more than one isotope of carbon, and when we take them all and we weight them by their abundance in the universe, that's going to affect the overall average of their masses. This is really no different than how any teacher ever determines your grade. The different parts of your grade, you'll get scores in each one, and they'll be weighted by their percentage of how much they factor into your overall average in the course. This is basically the same thing, except instead of grades, we're using masses of isotopes, and instead of percentages for how much they determine to your grade, we're using percent abundance. Interestingly, not all of the elements have multiple isotopes, so there are a number of elements, particularly at the bottom of the periodic table, that only have one isotope because they've only been created for short fractions of a second in the laboratory by people who are interested in investigating the process of making heavier elements. In those cases, the isotope's mass is always going to be written in parentheses to indicate that there's only one isotope of the element that's ever been produced, like in Neptunium that we see here. So in order to calculate average atomic mass, you're going to just take the mass of each isotope and multiply it by its percent abundance. So one quick math note here. When you multiply by percents, you have to do one of two things. Either you have to divide the answer that you get at the end by 100, or you need to turn those percents into decimals prior to doing the math by dividing those percents by 100. But if you don't do that, your answer is going to be off by a factor of 100. So please, be careful when you do that. The formula itself is not on any reference table that you have because it's just assumed that at this point in your academic career, you're able to take a weighted average. Let's try a problem that deals with average atomic mass. This is on page four of your unit four packet. So boron has two naturally occurring isotopes. Boron-10 has a mass of 10.0 atomic mass units and makes up 19.80% of all of the boron atoms. Boron-11 has a mass of 11.0 atomic mass units and makes up 80.20% of all boron atoms. What is the weight average mass of boron or the average atomic mass of boron? Take a moment, pause the video, try to answer this on your own, and then when you're ready, let's go through the solution together. So we're just going to take the mass of the first isotope, which is 10.0 atomic mass units, and we're going to multiply it by its percent abundance, which I've turned into a decimal, by dividing it by 100 to turn it into 0 0.1980. And then to that product, I'm going to add the product of 11.0 atomic mass units, or the mass of the second isotope, times its percent abundance, 0 0.8020. Again, turn into decimal form. When I do that, it winds up being 1.980 atomic mass units plus 8.822 atomic mass units. And so I get a final answer of 10.802 atomic mass units, which when I use my significant figure rules, is gonna wind up being 10.8 atomic mass units. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have. If we look at the periodic table for boron, we can see that we're pretty close to what is reported on the periodic table. So boron's average atomic mass on the periodic table is reported as 10.81 atomic mass units. As we wrap up, let's pay attention to a couple of notes. The first one is that average atomic mass is always going to be closest to the mass of the most abundant isotope. You can see that in our boron example from before. Because most of the boron is 11 atomic mass units in mass, when we do our overall weighted average, the overall average is gonna wind up being close to 11.0 atomic mass units. 
So if you ever want to figure out the mass of the most common isotope of an element, you can usually just go to the periodic table, get the average atomic mass, and round it off to the nearest whole number, and that'll give you the mass of the most common isotope. The second point that I'll make here is that you should not at all be surprised if your calculated result is not quite the same as it is in the periodic table. These are basically what we call precision artifacts. If I give you data to a certain decimal place, you may not be quite as precise as the data that was used to form our periodic table. We see this in our boron example because this boron is reported to the hundredth place in terms of its precision, whereas our overall answer could only be calculated out to the tenth place with any significant precision. And finally, you should be aware that even the atomic mass unit itself is an average. So neutrons actually weigh slightly more than protons do. And the way that the atomic mass unit was initially set up was that the mass of carbon-12 was taken to be the perfect mass. So they took carbon-12 and made its mass equal to 12.000000 forever atomic mass units. They divided that by 12, and they called each of those an atomic mass unit. In reality, a little bit more of that mass is comprised of neutrons than protons, but you do not need to worry about that at the level of this course. Thanks so much for watching this video on average atomic mass. Make sure that you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can explain why most atomic masses on the periodic table are listed as decimals and the significance of the non-decimal masses that we see on the periodic table. Also make sure that you can determine average atomic mass for an element based on isotopic mass and its percent abundance. If I give you that data, can you calculate out an element's average atomic mass? If you can, then you're doing great and we have no problems. If not, take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always get in touch with me by leaving a comment below the video or through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.